Hello, hello, hello. I am excited for this next section of Carla 2020. It's been quite a day. I, uh, my brain is kind of gonna explode. So hopefully it won't explode before I do this next conversation. Um, making sure that everybody is hearing me, I, I guess that everything is going okay. All righty. So I'm really excited to welcome uh, two amazing women for a conversation about an upcoming film. It's a spotlight conversation with Julie Taymor and Lorraine Toussaint. These women don't need a lot of introduction, but I will give them. Julie Taymor has worked on a long range of films and theater. Her credits include Frida, with starring Salma Hayek, which got six Academy Award nominations and won two across the universe, which received a Golden Globe and Academy Award nomination. So many more movies. Tempest starring Helen Mirren. Her Broadway adaptation of The Lion King debuted in 1997, still playing uh, if you know theater was still open and became an instant sensation, received 11 Tony Awards and has played in 100 over 100 cities in 19 countries, and its worldwide gross exceeds that of any entertainment title in box office history. So impressive. Um, Lorraine Toussaint most recently led the ensemble of NBC's drama, The Village. She also stars in season three of AMC's Into the Badlands and can be heard as the voice of Shadow Weaver in Netflix animated series, She-Ra, The Princess of Power. Lorraine was also the co-star of the sci-fi thriller Fast Color, directed by Julia Hart, which we showed at the Athena Film Festival and opened it. And we were pleased to welcome uh, Lorraine there. And she can be seen in Guillermo del Toro's upcoming horror film, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And they are both here to talk to us about The Glorias, which is based on Gloria Steinem's memoir. Julie? Uh, you, you're on mute. Got it. All right. You hear me nice, now? Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Um, I still remember our trip in Bucharest very fondly. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy city. Crazy right. city that was. And Lorraine, are you there? I ah. can finally. <laughs> Hi, Lorraine. Oh, Hello, Julie. So nice to see you, Lorraine. Um, I thank you. I panicked. I was like going, webinar. What's webinar? Well, you're perfect. Um, I, you've been at the Athena Film Festival the last two years in a row. So we appreciate that oh, thank with you. Fast Color. And then when we did the clip of the Glorious. So um, I'm just going to get started. Uh, I just wanted to tell everybody, super excited to let you know that we are actually going to show a clip of this film in a couple of minutes. So you're going to get it ahead of a lot of other people. And then we can talk about that. So um, the Gloria is premiered at Sundance and it tells the story of Gloria Siam's life and her role in our culture. I don't wanna get into too many spoilers because people haven't seen the film yet. But Julie, let's just start with you. What made you wanna tell Gloria's story using her book, My Life on the Road versus a standard biopic? Well, it wasn't that I wanted to tell Gloria's story. I wanted, <laughs> I, I received my life on the road from one of my very close friends on a beach, read it. I had known Gloria, not deeply, but I had known her. My family, my mother is a big politico in Massachusetts and now she's 99 years old, but she, Gloria knew her and my sister was very involved in politics. And though I'm in the arts, it's been around me my life, my whole life. And I read this book on the beach and it was totally not cinematic. You know, it just didn't read as a film at all. But what it did was it said to me, oh my God, these, this life, this life that this 85 year old woman had back then uh, is so, um, it's, it's just so rich. And it's very important that people see what makes an activist. What is the journey? Who are the people? And that one over there, well, I don't know which direction Lorraine is in, but she plays one of these extremely important friends and uh, partners to Gloria Steinem. I was taken with the road trip too. It's a road book. And most road movies are male. And when they're female, like Thelma and Louise, women die at the end. 
Uh, the idea, and, and Gloria talks about this in her book, if women go out on the road, everybody feels, oh my God, that's dangerous, that's frightening. How can they, you know, they'll get into trouble, there'll be all kinds of abuse, this and that. And what you really find in Gloria's book is that actually the most unsafe place for a woman is at home in many countries, you know. And so there were, the, the, I guess what really got me about her book was her friendship with these other women with the women who were her partners. Now she had many boyfriends over her life and married once, much later in life. But I, I you know, all, all films with women or a lot of them are about the male female love story relationship. And I just let those male boyfriends and husbands and they're, they're in there like this, this much. It's really the love story between these brilliant, funny activists, these yeah. extraordinary women. I think Gloria lived into sexuality before it had a name. And <laughs> right. I think that's uh, evident in the film and in, in her life when you talk to her. And the first person you see her going on the road with is Dorothy Pittman Hughes. And then she goes with Flo Kennedy, who Lorraine plays. And Flo is fucking funny. Um, <laughs> and, and Lorraine, you know, gives us that. But Lorraine, can you talk a little bit about um, playing a woman like Flo Kennedy, who should be as well known as Gloria, um, and uh, you know, bringing in uh, the kind of intersectional perspective of women in the second wave of the feminist movement? You know, um, playing Flo, I, I didn't know about Flo Kennedy until until uh, Julie called and said, "I want you to play Flo Kennedy," and I went, "Yes, okay, great." Who is that? <laughs> and uh, I then began this incredible journey into her extraordinary life as um, as an agitator. I think she'd even prefer to call herself an agitator rather than an activist because everything about her was about agitating. She was about um, creating conversations around her outrageous statements, her outrageous dress, and and she thought if she could get people's attention, then that's the first step. And she really pushed against the fact that at that time, most activists and feminists were wanting to be taken very seriously. So you dressed in suits and you, you dressed in a way that was almost masculine, almost so that the, the sort of male establishment would take you seriously. But she absolutely bucked that. She said, I'm going to go way out on a limb. So her cowboy, her, her, her pit helmets and her cowboy hats and the nails and the lashes and, and the outrageously um, um, powerful statements that she made. Um, she, was, she really did bring about a level of change and was one of the, the pillars of the first wave of the feminist movement. She also was a lawyer, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, her, 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 her and credit. She graduated the only woman in her class. And the, the way in which she, Columbia? Got it, Columbia? She, she, she sued Columbia uh, for, for racism uh, because they denied her access originally. She sued them, uh, won the case. She was admitted to Columbia as the only woman and only black woman in her class. That was not an easy road for her to walk. Really, I mean, wow. Um, Gloria, there's a, a bunch of amazing Gloria quotes because that is what Gloria is so good at throughout the press notes. And she says about Flo Kennedy, um, she says, for instance, because I learned feminism mostly from Black women who were older and active earlier than I, like the great Florence Kennedy played uh, from Aussie hat to cowboy boots by Lorraine Toussaint. I hope viewers will abandon the inaccurate image of white feminism. If it's white, it isn't feminism. Right. Um, and I think that's something that we're all trying to uh, emulate now in um, since the uprisings and since uh, you know this conversation about intersectionality and the the need for the feminism to be more intersectional um, as we move into what the fifth sixth, eighth wave of this. Um, and I would imagine your set was like full of women. And so talk, talk about, you know, you centered a woman in a story. There are several, um, you know, that's not happening very often. And so what was it like to, you know, really 
just create a set that was full of telling women's stories? Well, one of the things about Gloria that I feel is important to um, understand, well, you don't have to, you can just watch the film, but that when you are doing that big a life from age six to 84, 85, uh, you can't have one woman play Gloria. So we had four women play Gloria. We had a six-year-old, a 12-year-old. Alicia Vikander plays her from 20 to 40, Julianne Moore, 40 and onwards. And then all these other extraordinary women characters, Wilma Mankiller, mm -hmm. Dolores Huerta, Flo Kennedy, Dorothy Pittman Hughes, Bette Midler plays Bella Abzug. Uh, you had the actresses, but then I also hired Sandy Powell to do the costumes. Um, Kim Jennings was the production designer. My producers, Lynn Hindi and Alex Sachs are women. Um, my DP was not. My DP was Rodrigo Prieto and he did Frida for me in Midsummer Night's Dream. So it wasn't, you, you know, I'm not one where, oh, it just has to be all women. But when I could, my editor, Sabine Hoffman, I, di I did. But I, I would say our crew was equal. You know, it was a, a good combination of men and, and women. And uh, it, it was a vibrant and fun environment. And Gloria would come down to, she came down to the set at the end and people were gobsmacked because now they had lived her life. You know, she was there on the last day mm -hmm. and it was very exciting to have her. Um, is that sort of what you- Yeah, I mean, let's just talk about that cast. I mean, just the, you know, Alicia Vikander, a, a Scandinavian woman, playing uh, um, Gloria from Toledo, Ohio. Um, in her journey, Gloria goes to, if everyone's read the book, she goes to India um, and it's a seminal part of her life. And, um, you know, and then Julianne Moore, who like, woof, got Gloria pretty, pretty, pretty down. Mm -hmm. So um, talk a little bit about like uh, how you chose those, those women to be a part of. Well, I, Julianne signed on uh, before we had the money. She was there. She had gone to the Women's March. She knew Gloria Steinmer. She knew of her very, she's an activist. And I went to Julianne and I said, will you join us? So she helped get this movie made. Mm -hmm. Then looking for the younger Gloria that could play the part of Gloria that most people don't know. This is the thing. We're very familiar with the Gloria with the streaks and the glasses. And by the way, Flo, uh, Lorraine, she also did her mini skirts and her nails. I mean, that's where the two of them were 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 alike. And I, I met a lawyer who once told Gloria Steinem when she was going to speak with Dolores Huerta out with the great pickers out in California, he told her ahead of time, you shouldn't wear what you're wearing. He told her not to wear. This is a very important, I won't say his name, but uh, lawyer today. And uh, she, he, th he thought that she would be taken less seriously because of the clothing. And she went out there and people were just at her feet. I mean, they really got her because they got her. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the actresses, Alicia, I, I had never seen her do a full American accent in a movie. So that was my only concern. I was never concerned about her as an actress. And she had a, a, a dialect coach like Julianne Moore work with her and she nailed it. It's a, it's a flawless accent, American accent. And it, and it has the inflection of, Gloria's voice. Right. So I think that that was it. I remember being, you know, talking to her on the phone and just crossing my fingers, but yeah. she's so talented. How, and so her talented. mother is very political, um, you know, in Sweden. And she, she just gravitated towards the material. And as a director, you want people to be in love, not just with the part, but with the meaning, the message. Absolutely. The Why don't we show the clip now? And then we'll talk about it on the other side. Oh. Yeah. So was it as dirty for you, Melissa? It, it, was, it was perfect. Uh, yes, it was a little, but that's okay. It, it wasn't as bad as the, um, with the thing that we saw in Bucharest, so we get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, those of that, for those people who don't know, that was the first issue of Ms. Magazine, and it sold out like immediately after all the men told them that, you know, you're crazy, basically, to do this. Um, Ms. has always been Gloria's kind of like North Star. And, um, you, you, you know, the, her love for this magazine, you, you feel it when you, when you talk to her and when you know her life. So Lorraine, you know, in there, you're the agitator, that scene where you're like, <laughs> uh, you really, Flo just 
her moment in that scene is is spectacular. What was it like to do that scene where you knew it was like you're part of something that actually happened in history, so revolutionary? Um, you know, it was it was it's hard to it's it's hard to act history. Yeah. Um, but what what was um an interesting moment that watching that clip brought back is is we were we were we were standing around that table and uh, Julie at the helm of course and and she took an inordinate amount of time placing that little blue collie and <laughs> it was just baffling why this darn little thing had to be so specifically played every time and because we're all involved in a you know in a julie tamar film we trust her implicitly and uh, including all of her eccentricities i i you know and yes 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 excellent we're we're women of a certain age where we're allowed eccentricities and and suddenly she at one point she came in and she, you know her mind works so quickly and she's so she's juggling so many balls many of which we're not privy to she incidentally managed to say oh this has to be here because the collie is going to grow and evolve and she's going to rise up in the scene and she's going to Twirl and her tongue is going to come out, and there's going to be this whole thing with this collie. I remember, we all silently went, "Oh, right, this is a Julie Taymor film. Can we just put that collie exactly where she says?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the film has a lot of the animations and and things like that that people have known you for, and I think it brings a lot of life to the film. Um, before we move into the kind of conversation about what this film can do for our culture in this like election moment, I just wanted to read you a little quote that I got from Gloria. I reached out to my friend Amy, who works with Gloria still after I, I don't know if you guys knew this, but I actually answered phones in Gloria's office for um, oh, a couple of months. And uh, just people to know, like, there's an entire file cabinet full of death threats. So it is not the easiest thing to do what this woman has done over her life. But um, she said, I think what Julie has captured is something that I think may be true for a lot of us, which is that we are like those nested Russian dolls that our earlier selves are within us. What's moving to me about the film is that it has reactivated the layers of selves within me and they talk to each other. Uh, she likes the movie. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's great. Um, I, I, I you know, we're in, you know, 73 days to the election. The film was supposed to come out in theaters. We're in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of an uprising. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. The uprising um, going to change our culture. Um, but your film has pivoted now to go on to Amazon in September uh, to have the widest release possible before the election. So talk about the kind of activist goals um, with this film. I know that's one of the parts with Gloria is so wedded to, as you all are. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, we were planning to get on a bus. You know, for those of you who don't know the, the road picture, there's a Greyhound bus that keeps coming. It's a recurring theme in the film as all of the Glorias ride that bus and talk to each other and go in and out of it. It's a bus out of time. And our plan was to get on a bus and move through the swing states of America and show the film, Gloria, myself, actors, Lorraine, all of them, we at different times would get on that bus and talk and make connections, not just with women's groups, because men like this movie as much as women. And though it's going to be R-rated for one silly little drawing that we, and flows language, by the way, but we are not cutting it, it really is a great movie for 10 year olds. You know, it really is for 11, 10, 12. It's, it's see these women, you know, it's something to be proud of. All right, so now we're in a pandemic. We wanted it to be in movie theaters because as you saw in Sundance, a thousand people came to the premiere and it was thrilling. It was stamping, applauding, and final, you know, it was a premiere, but it was still, you had that absolute excitement of an audience. And I'm a theater person in my background and continue. Right. So it's very hard to think that it's going to go on TV, but we made the decision not to postpone Gloria, my producers and I, because, and, and the distributors, because 
we really feel that this movie has to go out and inspire people to definitely register and vote. And also, now let's get specific here, to have confidence in the power of women, in their humor, in their individuality, in the fact that it's not about a cat fight between you know, uh, different women leaders. We support women, that doesn't mean we can't be critical of each other, that of course men are critical of each other, but I think in, the, in Kamala Harris, it's, it's uncanny that we, 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 I feel like the glory is, it, we're behind her because she is a woman who is mixed race, Indian, and as you know, Gloria, well, as you don't know, but you do, Melissa, and you do, Flo, Gloria, at, at prime time, when she was 20, 21, graduating, she went to India for two, you know, to, for a, a fellowship uh, to study and ended up staying two years and traveling to villages and learning from incredible Indian women who understood, who actually were the inspiration to Gandhi that they were the ones who gave Gandhi the idea of nonviolence. She also learned about the talking circle, which is a very, very profound way of change. It's the opposite of Trump land. It's about listening. It's about grassroots. It's about hearing. So what we hope we can do in this pivot to um, Amazon and to being like we are now is that we can have Zoom talking circles, that we still will be able to connect with people out there that I hope, you know, Lorena said she would and Juliana, Alicia, that will all be available, especially Gloria and other women who have been involved in these movements to talk to people about it. What's it like to be involved? And I think that people will see, there's a beautiful, uh, Janelle Monet plays Dorothy Pittman Hughes and Gloria was a journalist. She was not a speaker and she was terrified of public speaking. And that character, Dorothy, when they went out on the road together, she was the one who really encouraged, she and Dolores Huerta, who encouraged Gloria to not just write about it, but to talk about it. And even though there's a pandemic, you know, and, and, and uh, Trump says, well, if you're willing to go out in the street for Black Lives Matter, you're willing to go out and vote. You know, I mean, this kind of ridiculous thing. It's, we will go out and people will go out very carefully, very with safety to, to make this election happen the way it needs to happen. So I think, um, as I said, we're out there a month before the election. So hopefully there's still time to really get it out to people and say, come on, you know, we the people, well, I don't want to have, it's a spoiler here, but definitely that's a big part of our film. And the nesting egg, thing that Gloria was talking about, just because I didn't, I didn't mention it before. Unlike a lot of biopics, which go from little girl and move through it in a normal kind of, you know, from young to old, we don't do that. We have the Glorias popping in and out of each other's lives. A young Gloria who, who's absolutely gobsmacked at the rudeness and sexual um, uh, misogyny of a journalist she, she, at age 25, she can't say anything. You know, she's just stuck there. Well, Julianne Moore Gloria will just step into that place and say what she's thinking. Now that's not real, but that's my, my play with this idea that we, um, to tell the story of Gloria, you have to see the changes and what she would have said had she known. And then when, when, Ju when Alicia Vikander says at one point, why didn't I yell? Why didn't I get out of the car and slam the door? The older Gloria says, oh, you will, believe me. You will say a lot of things and it'll get you in a lot of trouble, believe me. So you can, you can play with time in a different way in this. It's not really a normal biopic. As I said, it's a road movie. Sure is. Um, Lorraine, we watched, uh, I watched the DNC this week and saw Kamala Harris, so you know, except, except the, um, nomination for vice president and I can't help but think of the through line from Flo Kennedy to Kamala Harris, the lawyers, um, women fighting for injustice. Do you have um, any thoughts on kind of the legacy of Flo Kennedy? Of course, I mean Ka Kamala is standing on the shoulders of, of, of Flo Kennedy and I think she would be the first to, to, to say so. She's on the shoulders of, of Barbara Jordan and Shirley Chisholm and, and, and these extraordinary women through history that, have, that are finally getting their due in, in, on different platforms and different shows right now. So that's really exciting. And, you know, I'm, I certainly wholeheartedly support that ticket. 
and Kamala, of course. I'm, I'm proud that she's there. I'm, plow, I'm proud that she's there as a woman of color, of course. But, and in addition to that, she is, she is a, a, an excellent choice who happens to be Black. She, and so um, I, I just, I, I, I hope for the day when that's actually, um, we live in a world where that's actually pushed forward even more than we're able to do that at this moment. Because I just want to reiterate that that woman is going to represent everyone equally. I think there is a great pride within the black community and rightly so that she is the, she is a first. And, you know, the way my, my now 15 year old, when Obama came into his, his presidency and I said, you know, he's the first black president. And she looked at me and said, the first, <laughs> really? <laughs> and so, you know, hopefully we will be at a point where again, we will be able to say, she's the first woman really um and that won't be an issue but that woman is so overqualified to assume that role and i feel i am in such excellent hands with both she and and and, and presidential nominee biden and so um it's an exciting time to be a woman it certainly is an exciting time to be a woman of color um i feel very 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 hopeful uh, looking at this ticket. I finally uh, woke up like Friday and I was like, okay, I'm feeling that glimmer of hope finally, you know, uh, out of the darkness, hopefully. And um, in the conversation, in the world that we're seeing the pandemic and then the uprising and Hollywood is really trying hopefully to address this issue, um, to center more stories of women of color, to bring in new, vo new voices that have been marginalized. I'd love for you to both talk about as people in the industry, what, um, you know, your sense of when you're talking to colleagues, if you're going back to work and things like that, do you feel that um, we can make the systemic change that we need to um, make Hollywood a more inclusive industry? Either one of you, know, you start. I see, I see shows like Jordan Peele's Lovecraft and I see, you know, I've got my show that I'm coming up with, The Equalizer, starring Queen Latifah, who, who is carrying that show. And, and I, I'm slated to do another thing on, on Amazon called Fast Color. Again, that's about three generations of Black women superheroes. I think we are seeing the industry shift. Um, there was this misconception that somehow Black women couldn't make money overseas we couldn't make money in film we we and that is that was always such bull and now you know money talks and bullshit walks because we are clearly able to to make money not just local in, nationally but sort of overseas in and so um there is a big shift that's happening there's a big shift and and not just women but women of a certain age which is really exciting uh, because as women, we get more interesting as we get older. And so with these many platforms, there's room for these shows about women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, when it gets, it gets really juicy. So it's an exciting time to be in the arts. I think, um, I think prior to the pandemic, television it was always ahead of films. You know, the film still relied on a certain age for women and that there was that gap, you know, not, it, it may be changing, but I still am not sure about movies. I'm not sure. Not yet. Who knows if movies, who knows if movies will even exist at this point? It's all up for grabs because, you know, Gloria is, is, is a film. It's going to be on television. So how do you, it's streaming, but how do you tell the difference between television, things made for television and film? I mean, you know, uh, definitely our budget was probably bigger than a lot of television, but not all, not all. So I'm not sure um, film has changed or will change that as quickly as television. I think television has a much, much, there, first of all, the money thing is different. You know, how, how many, there's no opening weekends. It's very different. It's about subscribers. So who's sitting at home? Who's willing to go out to a movie theater? Are people going to go out and see Tenet? Are they going to go out and see 
movies, you know. Uh, we're in a drive-in, by the way, tonight in Martha's Vineyard. We're going, I'm going to see that Gloria's in a drive-in, in the car. I have to find the right radio station. But in general, um, I'm not as, as optimistic as a film director as um, Lorraine is. I, I had an impossible time raising money for the Glorias. It was not Hollywood, it's not for profit. Gloria helped find it. We can't, we won't say who gave us the money, but it were people who are interested in women's causes. And this is not a little film, but the way we were treated when we brought this with Julianne Moore, myself, Gloria Steinem, and a bestseller book, we could not get the kind of money to tell this wide, big story. Yet how many Winston Churchills do we need to see? So many. How many LBJs, or even Martin Luther King. I mean, you know, it's, it's the woman's story. No one had ever done a, a drama film on this subject matter, a dramatic film. We've seen documentaries, HBO is one on Gloria, but we've never seen a, a, a film. So that was four years ago. Whether that would change now, uh, I'm not sure for Gloria Steinem it would be changing now, maybe because of the Black Lives Matter movement. Maybe there's much more hope that we can get a feature on a Flo Kennedy, um, Shirley Chisholm, I know that there's going to be one. I'm not sure if it's film or television, but I know that those stories are finally uh, black stories and black female stories. I definitely think there is an absolute wider possibility for that. But some of the, um, I don't know, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful, Julie, because there, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we didn't have Ava. DuVernay. We didn't have Gina Blythewood. We, we didn't have Lena No, Wade. I think you have the female directors. We have yeah. the, film, the female filmmakers. And I think there's a movement there where they are finding, they're finding alternative ways of getting these films done. I think, I think, I, I do think the film industry is lagging behind. I think it is still difficult for women and certainly women of color to get their films made. But I, I have to have faith that we are moving forward because these women are moving and grooving. And, and yes, I don't know if movies will exist in the same way because so many of these women are also now creating films and, and distributing films that are going straight to the small screen. Mm -hmm. I think it may have to do with the screens as opposed, uh, that will also influence how and when these and if these films are made. Is Amazon going to put information about like voting and all that kind of stuff after people so. see the film? We, we will have a website. It's being, it's in the process. Our trailer and teaser come out, well, our teaser comes out in about a week or so, and then a trailer. And we definitely want the information, not just about Gloria Steinem, but all those women, Flo Kennedy. We want people yeah. to be able to go to that website and go, even if they saw the movie and say, I want to know more about this mm -hmm. character, this human being, I want to know. So we, we hope that it spreads and we haven't, I know I haven't spoken directly, but we have talked about having vote at the end of the film, definitely. And we do have an outreach program uh, right. plan. And screenings and, and things for yes. organizations. Yes, for organi that. organizers can come to us and, and, and have a way, even in September, to show the, show the film in, a, in an ex, a, a specific group to inspire uh, voting, absolutely. Uh, I think that that was always something that we, whether there was the, the pandemic or not, we knew we needed an outreach for a film like this. Yeah, absolutely. Money is the hardest part um, for, for women, and particularly women of color, to raise. Um, and because most of the purse strings are still held by VCs or, you know, people who just kind of want to see themselves as, you know, film investors and uh, be cool and go to Cannes and sit on a boat and stuff like that. So um, the question I, I want to, you know, hear you guys talk about is like, how do we um, get women? There are a lot of women, really, really wealthy women out there to think about this as, as a good investment in the same way that the men do. I want a women's studio. Like, I want a studio like that is just well, you do generating. It. I, can't you raise, do it. I can't raise the money for it. It's too hard. You raise the money. We I need mean, a I women's studio money. that is just making movies about women, all women of color. I mean, women not US based 
docs features we need one i that's my dream my ultimate dream but uh, it is very hard it's a hard haul so you know i know julia had such a hard time with the money and you were like basically making i always have about the most time. famous woman out. american yeah. living hero living hero yeah no just, I, I, my frustration just just uh came out over there um yeah. so uh let's think uh i was just gonna i'm just looking i'm yeah. scrolling down you know let me just add to this that the money that was put into the Glorias, there are women, a wealthy women who contributed to us and their names are on our movie. So That's they right. did. They're not a studio, but they, they're, they're film uh, producers. They yeah. do a lot of documentaries, maybe a lot more low budget, but we did, could not have done this movie the way that it is without the other women uh, who, who put open their purses for us to finish. I'm going to give a shout out to Regina Scully, who is, Johnson, you know, Regina the founding fund, founding sponsor of the Athena Film Festival. We wouldn't have a festival without her. She is always there to fund these kinds of movies. Mm -hmm. And um, she is a role model. And more people should know about the kind of funding that she does and other folks like her who are investing in women, investing yeah. in the future. Um, and do you want to, so what is inspiring you now at, in this pandemic as, um, you know, as we are hopefully going to be out of it, uh, you know, I feel like we're going to be in here forever. What, what are, what is inspiring you? What are you watching? What are you reading? Both of you. Hmm. Well, there's been some really great TV series. Uh, well, first of all, I'll say that right at the beginning, I started looking at the PBS documentaries, the American experience. I, I was really taken with um, uh, Reconstruction, that, that whole series on Reconstruction, which is astounding. I read the book um, by Skip Gates. You know, you, I don't know if you've read it, Lorraine, but it's, uh, it's a very difficult book to read. So it, it's so dense and rich, but watch that series. It'll blow your What's mind. Called? Reconstruction. I think it's, um, you know, uh, I, I'm not, look on PBS American Experience. The one on eugenics. If you know, if you you know what Nazis did, they learned about it from the Americans. The whole idea of race and anti-Semitism and all of it came right here in America, blew my mind. Then there were about four or five others. I'm really um, cheering for the American Experience uh, series, all of those, and I had time to watch them. So Elliot and I, uh, the composer Elliot, who's my other half, who did the music to all of my films and his own work, we sat there and watched them. Then the other things that I loved was Berlin, uh, um, Babylon Berlin. The series, I think it's a fantastic series. It's theatrical and it sets the, the place for uh, the beginning of Nazism. I mean, it really shows you the rise. And I love, I like political dramas. There's a couple of Scandinavian ones that I fell in love with. Um, Occupied, Borgen. Yeah. Oh, know. I love Borgen. Yeah. Um, I also watched the Tiger place. thing. The Tiger <laughs> So, um, ladies, I have to say, I've been told that we are out of time. Oh. I want to thank you both so much. So we're going to, the film is going to be on Amazon Prime here in the United States on VOD in September. We'll figure out where it's going to be internationally, Hi. probably after that, because there's a lot of people who are not U.S. based as part of this conversation. So we'll make sure to get them information in it. You know, we'll always publish anything related to this film on women in Hollywood. So you guys can find information there. I want to thank you both for giving your time um, today. And for folks who are listening, um, my instructions to tell you is that um, thank you so much for participating in Saturday in today's program. And we are going to be moving into the, okay, so I'm, the book, the book launch, Susan Liddy's book, um, and it will take place on Zoom at 8 p.m. And if you have read 8 p.m. Central European time, that will be 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. Those who registered will get a link via email. So that's basically in one hour from now, wherever you are. So thank you all so much for participating. Such a great, rich day. And have a, a wonderful afternoon or evening wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Bye, Lorraine. See you Bye. soon. See you soon.